Hi, welcome back to a new week on Out of the Bubble podcast. I hope you are keeping well and have managed to grab some vitamin D sunshine wherever you are in the world. It's been glorious and it's so nice to feel that warmth on your bones and your skin. And it just gives you such a boost to your mood, doesn't it? So I hope you've had a good couple of weeks. I am um, going to put my hands up. Last week, I missed an episode. I was scheduled to go live next last Monday and it didn't happen. And I think it's the first time that I've actually missed a proper episode run. Life got in the way. What can I say? It just was one of those weeks when I just couldn't get my act together. So apologies for that. But I have got more fantastic women to share with you. And I will make sure that I really kind of stay on it. And um, yeah, I can't guarantee it's not going to happen again, because who knows what throws it, what life throws at us. But I uh, apologize for missing last week. So we're back to it. And today is a really interesting guest. Today is somebody that I've been following on Twitter, actually, for a long time now, Wendy Battles. Reinvention Rebels, the name speaks for itself. And we're very similar, Wendy and I. We have very similar viewpoints about the fact that women's stories over 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 and beyond just don't get heard enough in the media and advertising and in society in a positive pro-aging way. Um, so we sing a very similar tune. And I think that's one of the things that I really wanted to kind of collaborate with her for this, this week because we are very similar. Um, you could say that we're probably competitors in the podcast market because we're very similar. We do very similar style interviews. And I don't think that's something we should be scared of. We should be able to celebrate, collaborate and champion other women in the same field as us, rather than seeing them as competitors and pitting ourselves against them, comparing ourselves against them. So I really want to try and make sure that we, that doesn't happen. And I'm really looking forward to celebrating all the work that she does, finding out more about what drives Wendy. And it's going to be a really interesting conversation. So next time you perhaps have an opportunity to collaborate with somebody that maybe you have always thought of as a competitor or someone that you wouldn't want to, to work with, maybe have a think about it because who knows where that collaboration might lead to. Right, I shall get ready, grab a coffee and enjoy. So hi, Wendy, we finally get to connect with each other after it feels like months of talking to one another. <laughs> Hi, Rachel. I'm so excited. I know we are both two very busy women, so it was hard to connect, but here we are. Here we are. And I was saying in the introduction, it's really interesting about you and I, because we're both doing very similar things with the podcast, and we both seem to be very like-minded. And I think sometimes there's so much competition um, against women kind of comparing themselves to each other, but it's actually so nice to, to celebrate and champion other women that are doing exactly the same thing as you and not to be scared of that. Exactly. I couldn't agree with you more. I think one of the best things we can do is encourage and support each other. Plus, when we start talking, it's amazing what we can learn yeah. to help us on our own journey when we talk to women that are in a similar space that have a lot of wisdom that maybe we don't have yet. Yeah, I'm just looking forward to this interesting conversation today. So I ask all my guests after I've done my introduction um, to just say three words that would describe yourself and why you've chosen them. My three words are purposeful, joyful, and inspiring. Purposeful, joyful, and inspiring. I say purposeful because I have spent the better part of my adult life trying to figure out what I'm meant to do. And it's not that I wasn't successful in my jobs that I had, but I always felt like something is missing. I'm not sure what it is, but I felt like I had a greater purpose. And at 54, I uncovered that purpose. One day when I was meditating, I heard Reinvention Rebels, which is the name of my podcast. And that's when I realized that it's possible for any of us, no matter our age, to live on purpose and step into who we're meant to be. So purposeful is definitely something that describes who I am. And so much of the work I do now is so purposeful based on having this self-discovery. So that's one. Two, joyful. I remember back in the 90s, which I know seems like forever ago, <laughs> I had this job and I had this computer and on my computer, my screensaver said, don't postpone joy. Don't postpone joy. As long as I can remember, I've been a happy, optimistic person and very joyful. I feel like life is so short. There is so much darkness and so many challenges, so much uncertainty, especially today. I feel like we need more joy in the world. And 
one of the ways I describe myself on my Facebook bio is joy spreader, joy spreader. So I've, that's just like who I am. So I feel like that's an important, important thing. And third is inspiring. So back in, again, the nineties, I'm going way back, Rachel, I had been out of work having some surgery and This is one of those moments, again, I was trying to figure out what am I meant to do? What is my purpose? I had all this time to think about it. And one of the things that came to me is that my mission was to speak, teach, motivate, and inspire. And that really is something that's still true to this day, that so much of the work I do is to inspire people. And it's not always that I think, oh my gosh, I'm so inspiring, but it's more what people say to me. Wendy, you really inspired me when you said X. Wendy, I yeah. find you really inspiring. Wendy, your podcast is so inspiring by sharing these amazing women that are reinventing themselves. So I think it's just in my nature. Yeah. And it, it kind of, and those, I feel like those three pieces really fit together, purposeful, joyful, and inspiring I to make up, those. you know, who I yeah. am. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. It's interesting. What Can I ask you, what were you doing before you started the podcast what's kind of been your your work background just just kind of quickly to summarize where you've come from I guess I've done lots of different things I've been a consultant I've been a health coach I have worked (coughs) in nonprofits. I've so I've worked in nonprofits. I've worked in corporations a lot of times around organizational development change management helping basically helping people transition, shine, adapt to change in the most positive way possible. So it's interesting that there's sort of this parallel with the podcast, I would say. Yeah. But most recently, I, I work at Yale University in cybersecurity. So that's my current role. So it's very different, of course, than ha- hosting a podcast. Yes. But both, both really joyful and both two things I really, really love. And it's interesting that you kind of had this epiphany, I suppose, of, of the um, the podcast title and the name and, and how it came to you. How open have you always been to change? Or is this something that's come later in life? I would say I'm a pretty open person. I'm pretty flexible. I'm pretty mm. good at rolling with things. Mm. Not to say there aren't moments when I'm like, I don't want to do that or that doesn't feel right. But I think just generally because... I'm a very can-do, see the possibility in things person, and I have been willing to take risks to try different things. Yeah, uh, that 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 has served me really well. In so I would say that I'm pretty open to the possibility of what often is on the other. What I also often think is on the other side of doubt. We can have fears and doubts. Yeah, we can let them hold us back, or we can choose to go for it, even though we don't know the how. But you just take a little baby step see what happens and kind of go from there. And that's been my idea, even with the podcast. Well, I don't know how it's going to work out, but I'm going to try it and see. Yeah, that's your, you're so like me. We, we had this discussion before we went live that we both started the podcast without any knowledge of kind of technical background of how to do it. Um, but actually it's fun learning new things, isn't it? Yes, yes. And I think Rachel, now that we're in our fifties, learning new things keeps us vital, yeah. keeps our brain stimulated. You know, yeah. so I think that there's so much to be said for dipping your toe in, even when you're not sure, and trusting that you can figure it out. Yeah, exactly. And that is back to that fear thing, isn't it? It's, it's that fear of, of fear of failure, fear of success sometimes, fear of what other people think that can hold so many people back. And once you get past that and start taking those steps, then that's when you can create real change, isn't it? It really is. It really is. And I think that we can look at other people's examples when we're unsure to propel us forward, to remind us that if Rachel can do this, then I can, I I won't do what Rachel does, but I'll have my own version of reinvention or reimagining my life that's right for me. So I can use other people to inspire me. Yeah, absolutely. And I love the title. I love Reinvention Rebels. It's such a perfect name for a podcast. I love it. And it sums up what you do. For anyone that hasn't really heard of it, how could, how would you describe the podcast and what your aim is for it? I would say that Reinvention Rebels is stories of brave and unapologetic women, 50 to 90 years young, who have boldly reimagined life on their own terms to find new purpose and possibility. So women who 
are in midlife and older. The, the women range between 50 and 90. I just interviewed my 89 year yes. young mom recently. So there are all kinds of stories, but that it's, it's the opportunity for people to see a little of themselves and others stories to motivate them. Because I believe that stories are universal, that mm -hmm. even though your story, Rachel, might be different than my story, that there's commonality. And when I hear you talking about your story, I'm like, huh, okay, well, look at what Rachel did. Huh. I see what she did. She told me she just took some baby steps to get started and she yeah. built from there. So what if I could do that too? Yeah. So it's that idea, right? Of trying to just really inspire people and help them think bigger about what might be possible as they age, which in my mind is anything. Yeah, absolutely. And isn't it interesting how kind of the media and often advertising don't portray kind of people over 40, 50, 60 and beyond in a really positive way like this, when there are so many inspiring people out there, men and women that are doing fantastic things and really embracing life. Why do you think it is that, that, kind of the media and advertising a society needs to catch up with that I think that we're stuck in this old stereotype about what older women can do hmm. and it's very provincial old school reserved and I think that's just the opposite of how women are today I think there are so many more possibilities and and I see it, it's changing to some degree I think we see more older models, people yeah. with gray hair, right? We see more of that than we ever did before. But I think that we, we so many of us have our own individual, individual stories of moving forward and being victorious in our own lives. And that's out of sync with sometimes what society says older women should do. You should, yeah. you know, have grandkids and sit at home and knit or whatever, yeah. which is just the opposite of what I think vibrant older women are doing today I think they're doing anything and everything yeah and absolutely. there's no barriers there's no barriers there's no barriers so I feel like you know society needs to really catch up to this notion of what's possible and I think the more that you have your podcast and I have my podcast and many other women are doing inspiring things to show what's possible later in life yeah. that as we see more of that as that becomes more present as we illuminate these women that are doing this it helps to change that societal narrative. Yeah, absolutely. That's why these conversations and collaborations are so important because I think it's, it's been passed down by the kind of the male dominance in society that have pit women against each other because we've been in comp competition because yes. the space, space in the business arena hasn't been out there for women as, as freely as it has been for men and I think it's breaking that chain isn't it and saying oh I see a sister there that's doing exactly the same as me I want to go and talk to her and find out more from her and what I can learn from her and what we can share and it's that commonality like you said that's a really beautiful thing that we need to embrace yeah exactly exactly and it's so interesting you said that about men and how I think often it was like well you can so many only so many people can do x yeah right? It's sort of limited in what you could do. Or there's only space for the X number of women, as opposed to why can't there be space for everybody? Yeah. Yeah. No, hopefully things are changing. What have you learned about yourself doing setting up the podcast? And because now you're owning your space, you've, you, you've got, you've created your own brand, your own platform. And that, that, that's something that can sometimes be scary if we're not used to it. But how are you feeling about it? What have you learned about yourself along the way? One thing I've learned is that I'm unstoppable. Yay. <laughs> right? And yeah. that was like my word for 2022, unstoppable. I am unstoppable. And I mean, which of course can be tiring, I might add. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right? We have to balance it. But I've learned that I have these deep wells of information and inspiration to share. Mm. And I've learned that it's possible to live on purpose and find something that brings you so much joy. You happily want to do it. Yeah. I've learned also just a lot of things about what it means to have an indie podcast. As I know, you know, Rachel, it's a lot of promotion. It's yeah. not just interviewing amazing women, but it's all the other things you have to do to build your audience. And I've learned I can do these things. Now, are there some things I still want to work on? Absolutely. 
would I like to make more Instagram reels? Yes, but I don't have time. (laughs) Would I like to master that and make them like really, you know, edit them more? Absolutely. But I'm still working on that. So there's a, there's a whole bunch of things that I still would like to learn and hone, et cetera. But I've learned a lot about myself and just what's possible that we, I've learned that we should have higher expectations for ourselves always. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, that's for our generation. I don't know what your parents will have, but my parents were very much like you leave school, find a job that a career that you like, and then that's it. You stick at it. And now we're all saying, well, no, that's not right. We can swap and change. We can reinvent ourselves later in life and we can do whatever we want. We've got that freedom now as we get older. And I think that does come kind of fifties and beyond, doesn't it? It does. And freedom is a perfect way to describe that feeling of being less inhibited, Mm -hmm. of making our lives a priority. Because I know so often women, we do so many things for other people, our families, our colleagues, our friends, you name it, but we don't always shine the light on ourselves. So finding that freedom to be who we're meant to be, to step into the light, to, to shine to me is so powerful. Yeah. And it's interesting that you said that you always felt that there was something more, you had something more inside you to offer because I felt exactly the same, that that there was something that I was meant to be doing that I wasn't. And why now do you think, why has it come to you now? Is it because it's been part of your journey or do you think again, it's age and confidence that comes later in life that brings you to that point? I think it's all those things, to be honest with you. I think it is age. It is wisdom. I also think it's just time. I, I think that when the time is right, things unfold and we can hear them perhaps or see them. Yeah. I think because I've slowed down and I've been able to tune much more fully into the inner wisdom that I believe we all possess, that that was really helpful. And one, I think is, one thing that I think is really interesting, Rachel, is that Earlier in my life, there were things that I wanted to do. For example, I did voiceovers for a while, but Mm. I never really could be, I never found it that I could be successful doing it. It's really hard to do it. And there's a lot of competition. This is back before you could kind of produce your own work and there's so many more opportunities now, but I kind of gave up on it. And I think what's interesting is that we often have experiences, sometimes ones that are disappointing or discouraging. But I do believe that all of the experiences we have are preparing us for something bigger, which at that time we can't see because I see now how all of these different things I've done, all of the speaking that I've done, all of the voiceover work that I've done, Mm -hmm. all of those things have helped pave the way for the podcast and stepping into my mission. So while it sometimes felt like, oh, I don't know why I bothered to do this. This really didn't work out. I now have the perspective to see those were stops along my journey. They're little yeah. breadcrumbs leading me to this. And I think if many of us can kind of step back and look at things, we might see something similar in our own lives. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can definitely see that that's happened to me as well. And it's, you talk again about that kind of listening to your instincts and your intuition and that often gets lost in the busy lifestyle, doesn't it? So how can we encourage women to take that time to really listen to what their, what the universe is telling them, what their mind's telling them, what their gut instinct is when, when it comes to making changes? Because it's scary times. It is scary times indeed. And it's also exciting times. It's yeah. one of those two sides of a coin. Yeah that you could lean into being scared, which is very easy for any of us if you just turn on the news yeah. any, anywhere in the world, or we could lean toward possibility. And I think that if we can decide that our self-development is important enough that we can say, all right, I don't, I don't even have a lot of time to do this. And you don't need to even have a lot of time. I think you just need to get started in small ways. So it could be something as simple as, I'm going to set a timer for 10 minutes every day and I'm just going to be quiet and still, or I'm going to journal, or I'm going to meditate. I believe that figuring these things out starts within. Mm -hmm. I believe that we have so many answers already and wisdom, but we have to have the ability to listen to that, as you mentioned, and sort of tease it out. 
I have found the most powerful way for me to do that is to be quiet and still. Yeah. That that can help guide us. You mentioned, you know, what the universe might have in store for us. I believe yeah. that can help guide that journey. So we don't have to make it so hard because I'm the queen of making things harder than they have to be. <laughs> <laughs> like really good at that. But I'm trying to get better about just easing in, listening, letting go, not being so stuck on the outcome. It can only happen X way. Because, I, you know, this has been my example, right, that I'm now doing a podcast that happened because it wasn't, it was in just a different way than I expected. I didn't think this would be the thing. Yeah. So I believe that just getting more quiet can help lead us to some of the clues and we can take it from there. Yeah. Beautiful. And, and it's so simple, but it is like, say, just 10 minutes out of your day, just, just spend that, just start somewhere, just do 10 minutes in the morning or an evening. It's just incredible how, what a difference that can make. I'm, I'm the same. I love journaling. I'm a big fan of journaling. I've got a notebook at the side of my bed, just get it all down on paper and it just helps clear my mind and just gives me some space to think. And I, and I love that time. It becomes part of your daily routine, isn't it? It does. It does. And I feel like when I, I'm all up in my head about things, which I tend to be mm -hmm. just writing it down to your point makes it much easier to clear my head and not have all that mental clutter. Like my mind yeah. gets much more quiet, even just the act of writing out whatever it is, for example, I might be worried about. I don't know yeah. how this is going to go. And I just write it all down. So I just stop writing or, yeah. or I set the timer for 10 minutes. I'm like, okay. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Yeah. And what have you learned about, because obviously you've taught to lots of different women of different age groups, what's kind of stuck with you the most when you've come away and talked to these women? Because obviously they're an inspiration, aren't they? But has there been moments that have really made a big impact on you talking to some of these women? There are. One of them was with Natalie, who at 60, retired early, wanted to travel, had never been a solo traveler before, traveled around the world by herself with one carry-on bag for three months. And I love that she talked about self-permission. Yeah. I thought that was really powerful because, and I don't know that we always think of it in those terms. It's not like I'm thinking, well, I'm not giving myself permission to do X. We just go about our lives. We're not always aware, but this acknowledgement that I am giving myself permission to have more joy, to have more fun, yeah. to have new experiences, I think is very powerful. Yeah. And I think for women as well, though, that permission thing is we, we often have spent time seeking permission from other people, yes. whether it's partners or children or parents that we're looking after. And so we're always seeking other people's permission instead of actually stopping and asking ourselves and giving ourselves permission. That's really interesting. Yes, I totally agree. And it's so interesting that you say that because it really is so true when you look back and you think how women can be more tentative yeah. We want more certainty about things where men often will just be like, well, I'm going to try it and I might fail, but who cares? Yeah. And so I think creating more of that spirit of I'm open to new possibilities is great. The other story I'll mention is about Mary and Mary had always been very unathletic growing up. She was a bookworm. She had her head in a book while her brothers and sisters were outside playing. She developed a weight problem as she got older. So she spent most of her adult life buying every kind of fitness equipment that she could, thigh master, you name it. She tried everything and nothing seemed to work. So she, but she was always into exercise. She was always into trying. So she was at the gym and she often was. She was, would do power walking. But one day something told her, just turn up the speed a little bit. So she did and she just started jogging. And then she said, well, this isn't so bad. Because she lived in a neighborhood where there are tons of runners and she always saw these people running thinking, I wish I could do that. Mm -hmm. That was her inspiration to sign up for a 5K that was that we have this big 5K where we live every Labor Day. It's a big deal. And people, you know, hundreds or thousands of people run in this race. Yeah. She told everybody she knew about this race or this run. That wasn't even so much a race, but a run. Well, that was the spark that ignited her becoming a runner at 55. She's now 71 and she has run in marathons around the world. Wow. But what I love best about her story is that she said at 71, she is in the best shape of her life ever, yeah. ever. 
She's so strong. She's so confident in her body. And we don't often hear that from women. You know, there's a narrative about women. We become less than our bodies are less strong. It's so easy to fall into the whole mindset about my body just can't do what it used to do and not feel good about our bodies. Our bodies are changing in ways we don't like. But I also think there is this other narrative. If we can see the possibility that I could be really strong as I age and it doesn't have to be that I'm weak and, you know, I have bone loss. I mean, yes, you have to work at that, but it is possible to have a different outcome as we age. Yeah, that's why these these stories are so important to share so that we remind people and we start flipping that narrative because it's we, we're kind of bombarded by all the negative things that become less of, you know, of, of what happens when you're aging instead of thinking about all the things that are really positive. Exactly, exactly. And I, I get why it's easy to have a half empty perspective mm. when our bodies are changing in ways we don't like and we're getting heavier in the middle, our metabolism is slowing down, we're memorializing the bodies that we loved and we used to have and maybe don't have anymore. So I totally get how easy it is to get into that mindset. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, if we can look at other role models to inspire us, it's like, okay, uh, and I'm not going to be a runner ever because I've got bad knees. So I'm not going to be running in 5Ks the way Mary does or marathons. But I also know that I can be really strong in my body and- I could work at it yeah. to do that. Yeah. What's what's kind of the goals for you now then? Because you seem to be on a roll. You seem to be really open to new opportunities and whatever's coming. But have you got big dreams and, and goals and aspirations now? Because I know I am certainly more ambitious now and driven than I ever have been. And I'm guessing you're the same. You were guessing correct. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Rachel. Yes, I am right there with you. And I've got two goals. One of them I've been talking about for years is that I want to do a TED talk. Oh yes, me too. Yeah. And I have had it on my vision board and it's interesting because I think there are many paths to get to our goals. And sometimes we get stuck on, this is the only way I can get there. When if we're open, it can happen in many different ways, often unexpected ways. And what's interesting is that they have, they just did a TEDx event in New Haven and independently, you know, choreographed TED events. Yeah. And someone reached out to me, one of the organizers and said, would you be interested in being an MC?" I said, I would love that because, you know, I like yeah. to talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I love that. And they said, because they said, well, we don't have any space for you to do a talk now because all the slots are full. However, in December, we're doing TEDx women. The theme oh, is women. Brilliant. And you could talk about whatever you want to talk about then. I said, that's so great. I love it. And yeah. so we just, it was just a couple of weeks or last weekend that we had it and it was amazing. And part of what I thought was great is that I got to go and walk onto the stage and walk onto this big red circle where you, you stand to do your talk yeah. and feel like what it feels like to be there and to own that stage, yeah. which is what people do all the time when they do a talk, right? Yeah. They are so inspiring, so engaging, so compelling and I thought, well, how is that for helping prepare me for December? Yeah. Is to already have that feeling of what it feels like to look out in the audience and you can't really see anybody because the lights are on you. Yeah. And it's a little, you know, it's a little nerve wracking, but at the same time, it's an amazing opportunity. So, so that's one is to do a TED talk. And two is that I'm going to turn the Reinvention Rebels podcast into the Reinvention Rebels TV show. Oh, wow. Yes. And I'm so excited about yeah. So excited about that. So that will be coming in the future. Who knows when? But I definitely have a big vision like you for what could be possible. I love it. And who inspires you? You know, who I'm guessing you're inspired, obviously, when you talk to all the women on the podcast, but have you got kind of role models that, that you really look up to that have inspired you on your journey? My number one role model is my mom, mm-hmm. who at 89 is starting to slow down a little bit now, but has reinvented herself many times and has shown me like what's possible that we can start from scratch. We can start over. We can figure it out that everything is figure outable. And even when it seems challenging, there's nothing we can't do. And there's a long history in my family of really strong women who have done all kinds of interesting things. My grandmother 
you know, got both an undergraduate degree and a master's degree, moved to a new city, got divorced, moved to a new city, started over, mm-hmm. you know, so I, I see the possibility there right in my family is my biggest inspiration yeah. about what's possible. And the last question that I ask all my guests, Wendy, if you were to pay yourself a compliment, what would it be? That's a great question. If I was to pay myself a compliment, I would say, I love the fact that I believe I can do anything, that I have a knowing. Once I get the idea, I know I can be successful. So I have a certainty about it. And it might take me a while. It doesn't mean I'm going to like do it right away. Yeah. I might even think about it for a while. But I always know that once I get the inspiration that it is totally possible. And one of the things I've said since the 90s, I keep going back to the 90s. But one of the things I've said since the 90s, and I read this in the Louise Hay book, is that everything I touch is a success. Everything I touch is a success. And I have internalized that. And I've internalized that so powerfully over the years. So I believe it to be true. So I just have this certainty that when I see it and I dream it, I can do it. Yeah, that's really powerful. I love that. Thank you so much. How can people find you then, Wendy? How can they find your podcast? Have you got a website? So many ways. My website is reinventionrebels.com. Very simple. And of course, people can find me all over social media, Instagram, I'm Reinvention Rebels, same thing on Facebook, on Twitter, where we met, Rebels yes. Reinvent. And of course, you can find the podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Brilliant. I will share all those links on the show notes as well, Wendy. And I'm just so, I'm delighted that you and I have connected. And let's just stay in touch. And I'm looking forward to following your journey and what you get up to next. I'm seeing that TED Talk in December. So well done you. Keep going. Thank you. Thank you. And it's such an honor to come and be in conversation with you, Rachel. And I can't wait to return that favor and have you be a guest on the Reinvention Rebels podcast so everyone can get to know you. Yeah, looking forward to it. Thank you so much for being part of this. And I'm really glad that we've connected. Keep doing all this great work. Thanks. Thanks, Wendy. Thank you, Rachel. I knew I was going to have a great conversation with Wendy. We're very like-minded and we have kind of similar parts of our journey and and, and have found this kind of passion and purpose later in life. So it was a great conversation and she's left me feeling really inspired myself and made me kind of think, okay, Rachel, you've got all these dreams and goals. You've got to start making more decisions to make that happen. So thank you, Wendy, for that. I feel really um, kind of ready to go. So that was a great, inspiring conversation. Let me know what you're working on. Have you got dreams and goals and passions that you want to start later in life? Have you got a new hobby you'd like to try? Have you got something you'd like to rekindle? Have you got a new career that you would like to 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 kind of completely change direction and if so what's holding you back let me know send me an email I'd love to hear from you um rachel at out of the bubble podcast.com so always love hearing from my podcast listeners and this week's been a really positive um week the last couple of weeks for me around this whole kind of ageism and pro aging for women particularly I've been involved working with a band called our time which is a dating service specifically for the over 50s And for those that don't know, I actually met my husband, Mark, online. We've been together 11 years and we've been married eight. And so I'm a big fan of dating and, you know, dating online, because I think that as we get older, we become more confident. We know who we are at this stage in life. We know what we want out of a relationship. We know the things that bring us joy that doesn't. And so it's a brilliant time to find like-minded people, to share new adventures. And it can be really exciting and, and empowering, actually, dating online. So if it's something that you're scared about, Um, give it a go because you know there are some fantastic services out there and our time is a great one but um, just have a look and don't be scared of it because I know lots of people in their 40s and 50s and and 60s that have actually met their future partners and are super happy now so it does work anyway slightly digress but our time did a survey and they they surveyed thousand people to find out how confident people were feeling over 50 and the results were amazing 78 percent of men and women said that they feel more comfortable comfortable and confident now in their bodies and in their mind than they did when they were younger so this goes to show that this this whole generation now of 40s 50s 60s and beyond we are really embracing life we've got all that confidence to start new careers step out of our comfort zones have all these amazing adventures so 
when you are having a wobble and if you are struggling to make changes, just start making small changes, small steps, because that's all it takes to start creating that ripple effect. And also listen to stories like the people that are rebellious um, rebels and to the podcast on Out of the Bubble. Listen to all these stories of inspiring people because they are doing it. They are making changes and living a really fulfilled life later in, in life. And that survey represented that. So it was a great to, to be involved in that, something that I feel quite passionate about, making sure that we have these pro-age positive stories. So I will be back in two weeks time. Um, in the meantime, keep being fabulous. <laughs>